Hey, welcome to the Healthy Postnatal Body Podcast with your postnatal expert, Peter Lab. That, as always, would be me. Today, it's just little old me again. Right? Little old me talking to you directly, a nice short podcast today. And I'm talking about the three easiest ways to, for you to improve your health. Absolute stonewall, lie on the couch. You don't even need to move. You don't need to change anything. It doesn't cost you any money. Easiest ways to improve your health or help improve your health. I'm also briefly talking about some changes that um, I'm going to make at H- with healthypostnatalbody.com, the exciting changes that are coming up. And I'm talking very briefly about Dr. Mark Hyman um, because there are one or two issues that you might not have come across uh, if you follow this particular guy, right? And like I say, I'll say it now, I don't have anything necessarily against them. Uh, a lot of this stuff he's saying is right, but there's an awful lot of stuff that is rather <laughs> sketchy as well. And there's one one big problem. So let's get straight into it, right? The three easiest ways for you to improve your health. It would be great. Here we go. So here we are for the podcast for the 1st of May 2022. I am joined today by a lovely little Pegasus and my little kitty, because wherever I go, she goes. I hope you're well. It's a lovely sunny day in Edinburgh. And, you know, I'm recording this live rather late on the, on the Sunday afternoon because my schedule went to pop. Um, so I'll smash through it <laughs> a little bit. We'll make this a nice short one in between all the hour long interviews and all that sort of stuff that we've done in recent weeks. I just thought, you know, I, I get a lot of questions from people saying uh, things like, yeah, I want to exercise, but I can't. Um, but I want to improve my health. I want to improve my diet. Uh, I want to improve my health, but I don't really, I don't like vegetables or I don't like fruit and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, what are the easiest ways for you to improve your health? The, and, and I gave this some thought, because believe it or not, every now and again, I do that. Um, I think about things a little bit. And I thought, okay, what are the easiest things that you can do that don't take any effort whatsoever, that costs very little money, and I don't mean... And, and that and that the things that don't mean that you have to do something horrible that you don't want to do. So there are almost no obstacles to doing these things which is why i think these are near the top and these are all backed by people that i've had on the podcast recently so the top ones right if your diet isn't perfect right the easy the first thing to do get yourself a vitamin supplement i know i know People are saying, well, do vitamin supplements really work and all that sort of stuff. But all the dietitians I've had on the podcast, and there have, there have been quite a lot, right? Uh, Kirsten Chick has been on. Juliana Haver has been on. Um, I know I'm going to... Uh, Glenn Livingston has been on uh, about the binge eating. Uh, sort of, we did uh, we had the, the big postpartum diet Q&A with Libby Mills. And these are all experts in nutrition. They're all registered dietitians and and more, PhDs and and, and all that sort of stuff. Every single one of them said to me, whether on the podcast or or just after, that taking a vitamin supplement, a vitamin supplement, is a good idea. So even if your diet is quite poor, or even if your diet is quite good, as uh, Juliana was saying, um, and Juliana Haver, by the way, that's the plant-based uh, dietitian that I had on. She said, no, just always take one. Even if your diet is pretty much bang on, you're much better off taking a vitamin supplement than you are not. Because it's really difficult, even if your diet is, is pretty on point, to get everything in in the right amount. Because, you know, soil depletion and all that sort of stuff and, and certain, certain fruit and veg and meat is just not as nutrient dense as uh, as it used to be. 
So they all said, take a vitamin supplement. So then the next question, of course, becomes, does it matter what kind of vitamin supplement you take? Um, and again, I, I, I asked them this question and they all said, no, it kind of doesn't. They're all kind of fine. The really cheap ones, if that's what you can afford, then that's what you buy. You're better off buying one of the really cheap ones that you're, than you are not taking one. Uh, personally, I buy the, the, the chewable ones. Uh, I think I mentioned on a podcast a while ago. One of them was Wellman's or something like that, or Bertie Bassett's. Or, or, <laughs> you know, I think I think he makes licorice all sorts. But <laughs> the the Bassett ones, the new chewable raspberry flavored ones, those are, those are the ones I buy. I get them at Tesco at the supermarket. And they are free for the price of two. So I pay for a three month supply. I pay like nine pounds or something like that. And just take one every day, just take one every morning. And I never used to be really big on taking vitamin supplements, but you know, I listen to the experts I have on the podcast and I change my mind accordingly, right? And like I said, this is a good thing to do for almost everybody anyways, but it's particularly useful if you're uh, postpartum and all that sort of stuff. And um, and we know that if you're postpartum and you're sleep deprived and all that sort of stuff, that um, your vitamin and mineral absorption is slightly different than it is uh, when you are, say, not as stressed and not sleep deprived and all that sort of thing. So it be, supplementation becomes, becomes a thing for vitamins and minerals and, you know, folic acid and all that sort of stuff. That doesn't mean you have to buy loads of expensive stuff. You don't have to buy quercetin. You don't have to buy protein powders. You don't have to buy... Uh, collagen supplements and all that sort of stuff. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about an easy step to improve your health, your overall health, and that's just get a vitamin supplement. Bulk standard, like I said, uh, works out, I think, like I said, nine pounds. So it works out as what nine uh, divided by 90, nine pounds divided by 90. If I wasn't such a moron, <laughs> I'd have this ready. It's about 10p a day or something like that. Um, so depending on where you stay, you can you can probably find one that is in in that ballpark and that's well worth it. So that's that's the first thing you do. Start taking a vitamin supplement. The second thing you do is from the interview that I did with Dr. Hugh Pharma, the microbiome guy. Um, and again, he has a PhD in this stuff, and he really knows what he's talking about for your skincare and for your gut biome. Don't shower with soap every day. You can, you can have a shower every day and just wash and rinse yourself off, but don't use soap on your entire body every day and don't use, uh, or if you wear makeup, you know, as you ladies, uh, some ladies are prone to do and some guys are prone to do as well. Um, don't use a harsh cleanser to remove it. So instead of using a particularly aggressive cleanser or washing yourself with soap every day, you know, just wash yourself with water every now and again. Keep your gut biome in check. Don't use any harsh cleansers. Go makeup free or something like that. Um, you'll be doing your skin and your gut biome a big, big favor by just giving them a bit of a break. And the nice thing is that by improving your microbiome, so your skin and your and your gut one, you're really massively improving your health. Um, because if you have, we know a lot of the irritations and Dr. Yuk. Uh, Dr. Varma spoke about this at the time. A lot of irritation, a lot of inflammation and all that sort of stuff is the leading cause of eczema, uh, physical stress on the body and all that sort of stuff. So if you just, like I said, I know Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you wash yourself, you get the dove out and you scrub yourself to, <laughs> to high heaven. But on the other days, you take a bit of a break uh, and don't do what I used to do and to take that is take three or four showers a day um, because you know wake up in the morning shower with soap train shower with soap in the evening shower with soap and all that sort of stuff you're just causing loads and loads of skin problems and any skin problem dry skin uh, overly greasy skin acne eczema and all that sort of stuff they are health issues Right, so again, we're improving and you can improve your health just by not doing that if you're in, in that habit. If you're, of course, if you're in the habit of, of doing that already, um, then you can stop using harsh products on, on your skin. Um, and that includes 
uh, extreme hand sanitizers, uh, makeup removal, and, and all that sort of stuff. So stop doing that. That's the second one. So I'm saving your money because you're not using soap, right? Uh, or at least not as much of it. And you're not buying the expensive uh, cleaning products for makeup and all that sort of stuff anymore. Uh, just, you know, you're saving on lipstick and rouge and all, all that sort of stuff. I know nothing about this. <laughs> I know nothing about makeup lines. I just buy if Wendy needs stuff, she tells me not to buy. And I, I am the schmuck that just goes to the shop and buys whatever is on the list. Other than that, I don't know what any of it does. But I do know that the stuff needs to be removed and you want to do that in a gentle way, if, you, if at all possible. Right, so that's the first two. Those are your first two steps. You take a vitamin supplement and you don't shower with soap every day. You don't wash with aggressive products every day. The last one, and I had to think about this a little one. You know that interview I did, uh, what was that, two weeks ago with uh, Teresa Fortin, T. Fortin Barnes about household cleaners. One of the best things you can do for your health is removing aerosols from your house. So nice smelling things, so to speak. So Febreze, uh, and by nice smelling things, I'm talking about cleaning products. So Febreze, Airwick, and all those sort of uh, stuff, the cleaning products that smell too much and all that sort of thing. And just remove the aerosol bit. So I'm not telling you to not use bleach. I'm not telling you to not use normal cleaning products, but we're not going for the scented ones anymore. And again, the, the science on aerosols is pretty much crystal clear now. They're not good for your health. I'm not saying they're killing you. I'm saying that cutting them out is likely to help improve your health a little bit because every little helps, right? It's all cumulative effect on all this sort of stuff. And then that means that at the end of all this, so you start using, uh, what did she use? Essential oils for fragrance, uh, Incense, Wendy has, has, has one of those organic uh, buffery sort of things that apparently is completely fine. Neom or something like that is called. Uh, I don't know. I bought it for her for her birthday or Christmas or something like that a couple of years ago. And that's an expensive one, to be fair. Uh, I'm not saying you should go out to their website and buy it. But that is something uh, that, that Wendy has doing something and essential it's essential oils and all organic and all that sort of stuff <clears throat> um so those are the three things those are those are my three things to do you take a vitamin supplement you stop washing with soap every day and you still wash every day right <laughs> i can't highlight this enough don't want loads of smelly people going walking around um so you're taking care of your vitamins and your minerals your cake Take care of your microbiome and your gut biome by not using anything too aggressive on your skin. And uh, just in case anyone's thinking that is there a link between the microbiome on the skin and the gut biome, as Dr. Varma pointed out, there is definitely a bridge between the two uh, somewhere. So I'm not telling you to buy loads of stuff from this in. If you take care of one, you'll likely take care of the other as well. And I'm not saying these things will massively improve your life overnight. I'm just saying that they'll improve your health overall, right? So vitamin supplement, aggressive cleaning products, and you cut out aerosols. Those three things are the easiest things you have to do. You don't even need to leave the couch. You don't need to change anything about your routine. Those are the easiest things I could come up with to help you improve your health. And I think they're very valuable things to do. Because people usually ask me, uh, or they say something along the line of, yeah, I want to work on my health, but, you know, I don't have time to exercise. I don't have time to do it. It's the little changes that we make that will make. These are little changes that you can make that will make a substantive difference to your health overall. Right. If you're vitamin deficient, taking the vitamin supplement solves that problem. I'm not then saying even if you just eat beige food all the time and your diet is by all standards, pretty atrocious and all that sort of stuff. So there's a lot of, I don't know, the only vegetable you ever see is a pea or something like that, or an onion hidden away in the pasta somewhere, right? That sort of thing. If that is what your diet is, a vitamin supplement will have an epic, epic impact on your overall health. Because being vitamin deficient will at some stage, a mineral deficient, will at some stage lead to problems. Um, if you recall from... The interview I did with uh, Kirsten uh, Chick um, a while ago. 
she was clearly saying that mag lack of magnesium, lack of zinc will lead to more stress and all that sort of stuff, lead to anxiety or can lead to anxiety. Um, and a good or decent, even half decent vitamin supplement will solve that, uh, will solve that problem. So the effect can be uh, profound. And the same goes for if you have dry, patchy skin. Instead of buying loads of expensive stuff, just stop using too many soaps and all that sort of stuff. So we can improve your vitamin deficiency and the overall functioning of your body. We can improve your skin health and all that sort of stuff. And we can improve your lung health and one or two issues that come from using aerosols that, that aerosols have been linked to. And again, I'm not saying Febreze causes cancer directly or anything like that. But there are issues with aerosols that I discussed in that. Like I said, it's a podcast of April the 17th with uh, Therese Fortin Barnes. If uh, you're looking for like study links and all that, so links to studies and all that, they are in there as well. Cool. I'm smashing through this, as you can tell. Uh, we're 16 minutes in. And uh, those are the top three things. So for 16 minutes, boom. Right, a couple of HP and B changes that I also wanted to mention. Um, I'm scrapping the forums because A, well, I've already scrapped the forums. I got Chris, uh, who does my IT stuff, to do that today because you guys are all emailing in anyways and no one's using the forum. So they're just dead weight and uh, they were costing me a lot of money to maintain for no discernible benefit <laughs> and all that sort of stuff. Our YouTube channel, or the YouTube channel, because it's my YouTube channel, right, uh, is going to be a bit more active. We're going to do some more short videos and all that sort of stuff that are like the short video I've done um, I've done before with regards to dietitians. So there's going to be some more responsive videos and all that sort of stuff. So make sure you, you subscribe and hit that little bell, the notification bell to our YouTube channel. That's also where podcast excerpts and all that sort of thing are still posted every Wednesday and the full podcast goes on there every Friday with captions. Speaking of captions, I know the last couple haven't uploaded properly. I'm trying to sort, I sort that out. I get some emails from people saying, uh, people with hearing difficulties, saying that captions and transcripts are not working properly. And that is something that I am working on, just so you know. Finally, 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 in the news this week, I was going. I had a whole bunch of articles in the news this week, and what happened then was that Dr. Mark Harmon or Harm Herman or Harmon Harmon said the following on his Instagram Previous reels. Previous study once, there was a biopsy study where they looked at muscle biopsies. There were two that kind of really terrified me about taking statins. The first study was looking at muscle biopsies and actually found that anybody taking a statin had mitochondrial injury. In other words, the energy yeah. factories that produce the fuel that your body runs on actually get damaged, and mitochondria are the key to longevity and healthy aging. So on one... Right. Anyways, that, 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 that's where he started. and I don't need to go into... Too much after that. Oh, I will. I will post a link to the little clip if you want to watch it on his Instagram reels. Um, the problem with um, what he's saying there is that he's not just incorrect, but the main thing is that he didn't link to the studies. So whenever somebody says, "Yeah, I read a study once, and that said X, Y, Z," and then they don't link to the study, that that is no good. And especially when it comes to taking medication and all that sort of stuff. Um, and I asked for that study and I contacted him, I contacted him directly to see where I could find that study. And all I was given by somebody else who follows him was a link to an article. And I've linked to that in the podcast description as well, because, you know, I link to stuff from the Kansas uh, University Medical Center, the, the Kansas University School of Medicine. Um, that a, a researcher, was it John Pifold, PhD, uh, is a research uh, scientist at the Kansas VA Medical Center. And he's working with Daryl Neufer, uh, Neufer PhD, who's a director at the East Carolina Diabetes and Obesity Institute. Uh, so very qualified people. They are going to do a study from 2019, uh, 2019 where they're talking about uh, the impact of statins on health. Now, 
and statins and the potential risk of mitochondrial damage. So with regards to that, Dr. Harmon is right, and then there is a study out there. What he neglects to mention is that these guys only looked, and I couldn't get my hands on the actual study, just, just the article where they list both the studies that he's referring to. They only looked at extremely high dosage of statins. So not 20 milligrams, but 80 milligrams per loss. Most people are on 20 milligram dosage. Um, in, in, the, in the US of this particular statin. They didn't look at all statins. They just looked at uh, one particular uh, statin that is being used more in uh, the US than it is in the UK and all that sort of stuff. But now, dosage really matters. And that is what this study was saying. That's what these guys are saying as well. Fifold and Nova, and this from the article itself, both stress that the purpose of the study is not to discount the life-saving benefit that statins offer with people uh, with or at risk of, for cardiovascular disease, right? Millions of people, quote from Weifold himself, millions of people take and benefit from them. Statins are important, but we don't know enough yet about the risk-benefit ratio for taking them, which is why we're doing this study, right? So... That is the first thing they're, they're, they're looking at. High dosage only, right? If you, own, if you leave that out of your comment, which is what Hyman did, or Dr. Hyman did, then you're creating a problem because as he, Dr. Hyman said, all statins lead to. Now, that is simply not true. He is massively, massively incorrect on that. It really, really is. That is not at all what these studies say. These studies say in very high dosage, there's, there are mitochondrial issues in some people. Not in all people, just, you know, skeletal muscle mitochondria. Right, so the, the more high-functioning mitochondria that skeletal muscles have, the more they can consume oxygen. And therefore, it's, it's very important for aerobic fitness and all that sort of stuff. But if... Which the study which they're going to investigate, which isn't actually out yet, by the way, so Dr. Hyman couldn't know about lower dosage. Uh, if high dosage is causes problem, that doesn't mean low dosage causes problems, and that is again that is not at all what no, uh, Neufer and um, and Feifold actually said. So Dr. Hyman is probably not deliberately misrepresenting the truth there, but it is kind of what people like him tend to do, right? Now, in 2013, and the, I will just deal with this as well because uh, Dr. Hyman mentioned that in his little reel, and if you happen to click on the link, then you'll come across that last bit, is where they measured uh, the effect after a 12-week exercise intervention. So second part of the studies, how low or high statin therapy affects the ability of the participants to improve aerobic fitness following a 12-week exercise intervention. Um, and then they, they compare them. Now, what Dr. Uh, uh, what Mark is uh, saying, Mark Hyman is saying, is that they found there is no benefit at all to cardiovascular improvement if people uh, are on statins and... Um, and do an exercise regime for 12 weeks. Now, not only is that counterintuitive, it also, it's also horseshit. <laughs> it is simply not true. And again, there isn't a single study that shows this. The, 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 the researchers are focusing on that, but that study is still ongoing. And that is what I think he's referring to. So, I mean, in 2013, Feifold led that study, a group of overweight sedentary uh, sedentary participants were put on 12-week exercise program. But again, this only works for remarkably high dosage of statins. And there is no information about the size of the study. That was, from what I can tell, it's a small study. But I can't find that 2013 study at all. Actually, let me just fivefold 2013. Let me look whilst I have your attention. Uh, Fivefold 2013 study because I could I could have done this earlier. Uh, study mitochondria statins 
Right then, we're using Google for that in Paris exercise training. After Google studies, blah, blah, blah. Was by Micus. Right, this is one by Micus, and is fivefold part of this? Yes, fivefold was part of this. So 37. See? See? <laughs> it's a study of 37 participants. So, what are we talking about here? If you don't link to the study, then you can't even find, you can't determine how good or how shitty the study was, right? So this was this was a small, a tiny study that we, you can't draw the conclusions that statins for millions of people are useless from it. <laughs> that just doesn't make any sense. And this is a problem with Dr. Mark Hyman. He says a lot of stuff, like I read a study that said, yeah, but unless you link to this stuff, and I always link to the studies that I that I quote, unless you link to this stuff, you add no value to the discussion. You just don't. You're just throwing a statement out there. And in this case, it turns out it's a really small study. And therefore, even the guys running the study don't say you should jump to that conclusion. Um, so please stop following Mark Hyman, or at least, you know, like I said, I like him with regards to insulin resistance and all that sort of stuff up to a point. Uh, you know, the whole food is medicine. Yeah, I'm on board with that. But throwing out random statements like that is just not helping anyone. And it's actually doing a lot more harm than good. But anyways, that is the podcast for this week. A new bit of music coming up. And we'll take us up to the half hour mark. Right? We're flying through it. You have a tremendous week and I will check in on you and catch up with you next week. Um, I don't know what I'm doing next week yet. I have some interviews scheduled with some really, really cool people, uh, but they're not happening until the week after next. Right. So we'll see. New bit of music from Kamikaze. You take care of yourself. Bye now. Suspense up, God. Hallelujah, we made it. Thank God I learned patience. I was all in my feelings. Like, get me out of this matrix. I was jumping on buildings. Labels act like they ain't see. Now, when they hit my lineup, I just act like I ain't me. Fix God, no, it can't be. Off of one, I demand three. Copycats, you are not me. My girl call me Poppy. Hand sand for you, dap up. Whole city getting lapped up. Soon as we knew it was possible, then we knew we had it wrapped up. Come across. Blinded by the show, lights, paparazzi, they know I'm a gold mine, everybody, know me where I go, why suicidal, hanging with the low